Showtime single group maneuver track east. Showtime, copy. And tally. I got the trailing. Fox three long. Crank to the uh, to the right. Welcome back to the channel and to the next lesson of BMS Weapon School. Today we will discuss the different air-to-air -air weapons that you may encounter while flying in BMS. We've referenced the vault by Teespring as our resourcing document. Today the students presented and explained the properties of each missile. The best way to familiarize them with the weapons is to allow them to use it for themselves against the AIM-120C and experience the inferior qualities firsthand. I was leading Falcon 1, a blue 2 ship with AIM-120s, and Promdate was leading Hunter 2, the red 2 ship with red 4 missiles. Check out the description for chapters in my Aviation Plus store where all purchases directly support the channel. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See ya! Alright, so here we go. The AA-1 Alkali Guidance SARH, which I believe is Semi-Active Radar Homing. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, so does that mean, like, during the missile's final flight path stage, it becomes active on the RWR? So, the semi-active, the moment they launch at you, you get the, the, the uh, tr traditional missile launch. So you okay. get the beep, 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 and it'll, it'll, you'll just have a, a spike throughout that guidance. Um, just okay. because you lose spike does not necess necessarily mean that they lost lock and the missile trashed. So... That's the uh, okay. the Fox ones. So, so it's still guiding. Yeah, possibly yes. Okay, so the range from the front is limited down to three to four nautical miles. Range from the rear is really limited down to one to two nautical miles. Shaft effect is very high. Make sure you have that selected. Maximum target G. So target can pull only a maximum of three Gs. I guess after that, it lose guidance and won't be able to track. Maximum velocity of the missile one point eight Mach. Uh, let's see, aircrafts. Basically MIG older, older yeah. aircraft. MiG-17s, 1921s, new 15, geez, 1957. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> break turn of 4G. That makes sense. <laughs> Shaft, maximum angle of attack, 14 degrees. Gimbal limit, 25. Tracking rate, 14 degrees a second. Field of view, 8 degrees. So uh, with this missile, what would be some of the things you would do to, to uh, evade it? Uh... Definitely make a hard break turn beyond three G's while pumping out a decent amount of shaft. Yep, and it's very I mean, high, so you probably need like one or two to probably lose you. Yeah, but if they're, they're that close, to, uh, won't, won't the uh, the bogey still be on your tail? Moving on to the uh, AA 2B, a Bravo Atoll. Guidance is the same, semi active radar homing, uh, range from the front. Increase a little bit, four to seven nautical miles. Range from the rear, increase a little bit more, three to four nautical miles. Shaft effect, once again, very high. Same max target G at three. Maximum velocity increase to 2.3 Mach. And with this one, it also says get get below horizon uh, for defense, right? Do you know why? Uh, terrain, terrain masking? No, not necessarily. It yeah, doesn't have the... Oh, oh yeah. If you, if you're up high, then you're facing down, but uh, it will also pick up something from the ground. That's correct. The ground clutter. Yep. What about the first one then? The first one should do the same too. It right? should. I guess he didn't put it in there, but it should do the same thing. Then uh, debug if you would do the do that next one there. If you don't know what, like the parentheses, the different colors, it, it's fine. It's gonna go over the the basics of the each missile. So we are at AA2C? Yes. Okay, so from semi-active, we're transitioning to IR, and this is a rear aspect only. Front range, it says one to two miles, but it really shouldn't track you, I guess, from the front. Yeah, um, shouldn't, right. but it, it could at one or two, depending on on uh, conditions. Your, your heat heat signature, yeah. Yep. Uh, rear range is two to four miles, but I don't think it, it just can hit you from four if, if you're actually trying to run away from it. Yeah. The max G, max target G is six, and, well, it, it can outrun us, obviously. It can catch us if, if it wants to. This is fast, faster compared to the previous ones, but to defend, uh, you do it four or five or six G turn and then flare. Yeah, it's acceptable uh, against flares, so we can just flare it out. Yeah. Also, if you're burning, just cut the burner out. Yeah, do some flares, and it should should lose you pretty easily. Cut the burners, flares, and then pull the six G. And do that next one there, the AA six. Okay, this looks like a bigger missile, and uh, this is again radar guided, semi-active, eight to twenty nautical miles front range, and four to six from the 
back and max g is six so if you you can out turn this and chaff chaff it out essentially it says low maneuverability that's kind of implied with max 6g yeah and weak radar pass 10 nautical miles i guess this is uh related to the to the plane that's not necessarily the the missile itself uh li limitations it's probably the the receiver the uh the receiver sensor on the aa6 it can't really see or receive the weak signal past 10 miles so it's right. probably the on the missile because I know the MiG twenty five could lock you up with all these other missiles down there. Um, they have another Fox one that's a little bit more better than than uh, this AA six. So I would say that the, the antenna receiving the, the the radiation is weaker. It can't see anything past mm -hmm. ten nautical miles. Okay, so the next one is I guess the same chassis. They just attached IR guidance to it. Yeah, basically. Uh, max G and max velocity is similar, so you can. Out, turn it, and just flare it out. Um, the the first one was highly susceptible to uh, chaff, but this is a bit less susceptible to flare. It On the says medium. medium. I don't know what what that is like, sixty percent or forty percent efficiency. But you can you can I guess flare it out. It's not a high tech. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next one. Uh, I guess we're switching between uh, the chassis here, so we, we get one semi-active and one uh, IR. So this is the Apex. I think I used this one in DCS with the MiG. Uh, 7 to 10 miles uh, front range. Uh, it can pull 7 genes and up to tr almost Mark 3. You can still uh, turn this with the F-16 and also we're supposed to beam it. And it, it I guess, bleeds speed rapidly in turn, so we can at least make it turn a couple of times because if, before it comes to our vicinity, then we're at advantage. Yeah, it probably has a low uh, burn rate or burn uh, time on the, the motor. Right. Uh, it bursts to get th to Mach 3, and then it kind of turns off, and then you could bleed it off pretty easily. Let's check the next one. This is this looks like the IR version. Rear aspect still, 4 to 5 miles from the behind, 7G and Mach 3 max. Interesting. So this calls for a 4G brake turn instead of a like a... 8G compared to the other one. That's interesting. I would probably try to turn as much as possible while flaring. Yeah, that would probably be better. Okay, now we're coming to the fun stuff, I guess. Yep, and uh, prom date, go ahead and take care of that one right there. Oh, look at this one. All right, we got the AA-8 aphid. Aphid, that's a nasty little insect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the guidance, yeah, infrared, all aspects. Uh, let's see, range from the front, 3.5 to 8 nautical miles. From the rear, <clears throat> 2 to 3 nautical miles. Flare effect is low. Maximum target G is 10. The max velocity Mach of 2.9, similar to the previous ones. So we got a head-on brake turn of 9 Gs while flaring, even though the effect is low. A uh, minor, okay, I do not know what IRCC. That's uh, infrared counter countermeasures. Oh, oh! Okay. It can filter flares out. Yeah, it filters flares. Like that's this is. I I know I'm looking at an engine, and then there's something that's twice as hot. That is definitely not an engine, and I'm gonna keep after the engine. Oh, so it okay. just filters out things. Okay. Wow. Okay, moving on down. <clears throat> AA-9 Amos guidance. All right, we're back to the semi-active again. Range from the front, twenty to 40, 40 nautical miles. That's a big increase. Range from the rear, 6 to 9 nautical mile. Shaft effect is medium. Max target G is uh, 4 Gs. Max velocity, 3.6. That definitely bumped up. And let's see. So we got a brake turn of 5 Gs while shafting on the beam it. Weaving back. Oh, so that's like our serpent, huh? Yep, serpentine. Cool. Dive and climb. Try to fool it. Low maneuverability, that's always a good thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. usually if you do like a, a, a roll, like a 45, 50 degree roll to a direction and continue that turn, you do some uh, some chaff and it should it should lose you, usually. It's the about the time where it, it loses you, loses lock. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, there's not a missile coming at you still. It can still reacquire you, has the chance to reacquire you and still uh, hit you. So right. just be aware of that. All right, we got the AA-10 Alpha. Alamo, guidance, semi-active again, range from the front, decrease a little bit, 13 to 18 nautical miles. 
range from the rear decreased a little bit more. For the seven nautical mile shaft effect is medium, same. Max target G increased to nine. Maximum velocity decreased a little bit, 3.4 Gs. A nice little, ooh, nice little slow aircraft. Jaguar MiG-21, 29. Okay, here we go. 27, 230, 232, 33, 35, and 37. Oh, we're back to the brake turn to nine Gs while shafting. Beaming, 15 nautical miles, weaving serpentine, dive and climb, loses speed quickly in turns. Close enough for it, it it's pretty pretty dangerous. Usually you would already have your 120 out by now, but in a, right. in, a, in a sense where you see one person, you get fixated to someone else coming to your left or right flanking you, Alamo could get you pretty easily from the side. So basically you have to defend it by uh, beaming it, going straight at it, and then turning? So um, it's always good to turn away from it first, but beaming if you're on the head head on and you, you hear the launch, you can kind of look at your distance real quick and kind of calculate, estimate uh, how long it would take. So you could go in the burner and beam for a couple seconds to get out of the burn and then it'll go to just uh, kinetic energy. And it'll lose it because of your beaming and then you can kind of turn away at the same time. All right, so this is the Bravo version. Guidance, uh, infrared, all aspect, range from the front, 7 to 20 nautical miles, rear, 5 to 7, flare effect low, max G again of 9, same with the velocity, 3.4 Mach, aircraft, oh, 29, 31, 27, 30, got all those. All right, so, yep, brake turn again, 9 Gs, pump out about 4 to 5 flares. So, since yeah, this is so an IR, what uh, indications would you... Um, expect if you've been launched on visual. Yes, that is absolutely right. Any any other indications? Possible indications? Old Craig in his Sioux thirty screaming, "I got you now!" That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. I got you now. It's like, oh, oh. And that's pretty much it, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, there's one possible. Might... There's a possible indication. You might have your wingman scream at you or something like that. True. Yeah, your AI wingman, your human wingman. But uh, another possible indication, they kind of need to be locked on to you to get the seeker in the in the right direction. So they'll be locked on to you really close. So if you're really close, like 20 miles, and they're locked on to you, they're most likely going to shoot this missile. If they shoot anything else, like a, a, eight, a 10 Alpha, you'll hear it because it's semi-active. If it's a 10 Bravo, you won't hear it. So you just have to assume if you're within that 20 miles head on and seven miles rear and they start locking onto you and spiking you, you have to assume that one of these is on the way. It's on the way. So as soon as you uh, see the uh, RWR that one of these bogeys has, it's, it's on the RWR and coming at you. Yeah. So at least look in the direction so you can see that plume okay. before it goes out so you could um, evade accordingly. And don't quote me on this, but I think if you fly this in BMS on the other side, on the red side. I think you can decouple the seeker from the radar. Yes, so you, you can. you could do a stealth launch. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's just so, highly unfortunate. Most people won't do it, though. Most people will go for the radar lock, and uh, you will get a slight warning in the sense that you'll know you've been locked up. Yep. Goodness. Okay, I'll move on to the uh, AA-10 Charlie, which looks like an upgraded version of the Alpha Alamo. Okay, so we're back to the semi-active. Uh, range from the front increased 15 to 25 nautical miles, rear 8 to 10. Uh, shaft effect is medium, so that's the same. Max target G is 9, so that's the same. Max velocity of the missile uh, increased to 3.9 from 3.4. Uh, let's see here. Aircraft, still similar. Brake turn, once again, is 9 Gs uh, while shafting and beaming. And uh, bleed the energy, weave, uh, dive, and climb. Go ahead and do do one more, and then uh, okay. debug. You'll do the eleven and twelve. Right. Now we have the uh, Delta version. Don't see a picture of it, but that's okay. Guidance infrared, all aspect range uh, ten to twenty five nautical miles. Range from the rear eight to ten. Flare effect is low. Max target G once again is nine. Velocity is the same as the Charlie. Uh, let's see aircraft uh, remain similar. Brake turn once again at 9 Gs, pumping out 4 to 5 flares, just like the Bravo version. Well, this one you have to be a little bit more, because you can be 25 miles away. That's pretty far to have an IR missile coming at you. 
So exactly. they could just shoot it and leave, and you'd be like, oh, why did you do that? That's weird, and then you explode. So even though the flare effect is pretty low, you still just pump them out just in case, right? Yeah, you can. And it, it does have a uh, infrared counter countermeasure, so careful with that. Okay, so this is the ET. Okay. Yeah, the top, yeah. Well, other I, than the I 12. wonder if it's actually thermally locking you at 25 miles, or maybe up to a point it's softly guided by a radar and then it activates. Because Possibly. what happened in in our in one of our first flights is that I think someone shot this behind your shoulder, like you were too red for, and someone shot this to me, and it actually did a blue uh, or red on red kill. Mm. Uh, so I think it can still. I mean, I'm not sure if it's thermal all the way or not. Might be a little bit of both. Might be like yeah. a uh, like a NPRF equivalent of infrared so it's like a whatever waves it's like the the beginning stages of this nose in the direction like a 10 degree cone and then it narrows down and it sees what it's actually locking on to and then continues oh right, right. That, it could do that maybe okay a11 archer so this is uh an ir all aspect missile up to 17 miles from front and eight miles from the rear very very uh low susceptibility to flares and it can pull up to 12 Gs and travels with the maximum velocity of Mach 3.4. R-73 is the other name. It's an 84 missile, so it's relatively new. Uh, so basically, if it's head-on to a high speed now after burner brake turn, uh, not sure what TVC is. Not sure either. Uh, but it has flare filtering, and I don't know what IIMCS is. But try not to get this launched at you. Oh, head mounting queuing system. Oh, HMCS. Okay. This can be, I guess, also launched off bore site. Yep. And it's equivalent to, you know what it's equivalent to? Or what the competition is? Yes. 9M? 9X. 9X? Okay. Yep. Competition is the 9, 9X for the AA11 Archer. So treat oh, that yeah. like an I. Right? Yeah. yeah. Treat yeah. that like an 9X, which you're, if you get shot by it, you're probably going to get hit. Yeah, I've seen this missile do some funky stuff. Okay, uh, A12 Adder, R77, so we're Ooh. coming into oh. <laughs> no, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> into the active radar homing now. Funny name, Amramski. <laughs> Amramski? It's like, it's like Amram, but you put a ski at the end, make it Russian. Yeah, give it some vodka, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so up to 20 miles from the front and 8 miles from the back, and it, it's... It has low susceptibility to chaff. Max tag G is 11 and full like 4.2 Mac. Yep, pretty quick. Well, let's see what airframes we have here. MiG-29, the flanker, uh, SU-30, 33, 34. Pretty much everything high tech carries this and it's 90, 94. Defense is pretty much the same, like the 120C. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to bleed its energy by weaving and diving and you have to break as, as soon as possible turn your jammer off once it's launched at you uh, it's actually a trap for you if, you if you have it on you're essentially pinging your location all the time yep make sure you uh adhere to your mar set in your briefing make sure not to get too close because deadly if you're close if this was the bread and butter missile that uh craig and i would use when we'd fly with the su 30s it's definitely worse i will say that it's definitely worse than the amram but the Su-30 in BMS is a, it's very weirdly modeled, but overall, without flying an afterburner, it's actually better than the F-16 in terms of being able to get up to a very high altitude, maintain a very high speed. So you're offsetting the disadvantage of the missile. It's not enough to make it an even fight, but it's enough to actually allow you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an F-15 or an F-16 in BMS. Yep. That's happened to us. We were in, in the Vipers trying to maintain altitude, tapping into the afterburner. Yeah. And you guys were in flankers and... Uh, like 30, 40,000, Mach 1.5, yeah. just chilling. All right, let's go through these here a little quick. All right, I'll, I'll pick up some speed here. PL-7 Thunderbolt, Chinese missile. It's, it's a copy of our 550. It's not as good, I guess. That's what they say. Front range is... One mile to two, <laughs> that's not much. Mm -mm. And max range from rear is five miles. And it's, you can flare this out, essentially. Just turn and put some flares out. PL-8, this is an all-aspect 
missile and it has some counter counter measures so it's less prone to flares it can pull up to 9 g's with max velocity of 2.5 knots so this is a relatively slow missile compared to the others turn and flare that's it and you can if you can try to turn a couple of times before it gets at you it loses speed a lot okay uh pl10 this is again uh an ir all aspect looks like a copy from the front it has up to 18 miles range and from the rear max nine it cannot pull you at 15 g's and uh, it has 3.7 mark it actually doesn't say anything about the defense so standard ir defense uh no no afterburner and try to bleed its energy as much as you can and put some flares out and uh prom okay. date go ahead and take care of that one okay 12. pl12 thunderbolt okay so Active radar, uh, range from the front, 15 to 20 nautical miles, rear, 5 to 8, shaft, effect, very low. Maximum target G at 11, velocity of the missile, 4.2, home on jamming, so turn the jammer off, brake turn at 9 Gs, bob and weave, dive and climb, crank and pump. And let's take a look at those. You can compare it with the uh, the <laughs> previous missiles we saw, saw. So 17 to 30 for the front, 12 to 16 for the rear. 3.7, so actually the PL-12 is quicker than, pretty sure it was like 4 point something. So it's quicker than the AIM-120C. What are some of the telltale signs that someone has uh, already launched a FOX-3? So you're looking at the FCR, you're locked up to them, and what do you notice as a telltale sign that they have, locked, that they have launched a missile already? Oh, they start turning away from you. And there is no launch warning. A little, little bit more descriptive. Uh, is it, uh, which one was it? It's a, it's a brevity term. Crank? Yeah, so they start cranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. S so you'll see them go off about 50 degrees. You'll see them on, on your FCR. You'll kind of see them turn off and, and just kind of crank you. So you'll be like, oh, well, he probably sent, he sent something already, so I should probably either, one, uh, send something back, and, or two, turn off. It would be the best to do the first one because you want to have something going after them because it'll just bonsai and come back in. It, it, when in doubt, shoot something. You don't can't just turn away and not do anything. And if you and, and if neither of those options are available, then you already had some problems before that moment. So Hunter, when it comes to defending, don't defend too much because we want to save some fuel. It just kind of gets you used to the uh, the missiles that you have there. Okay, Hunter, copy. Sounds good. All right, flight hook left. I got a single contact uh, bullseye two three zero two five angels two one. Hunter two showtime single group maneuver track east. Hunter two, two to showtime copy and tally. Hunter two showtime range single group thirty miles. Copy. To your shooter on the target. I got the trailing. Fox 3 long. I got the trailing Fox 3 long. Crank to the uh, to the right. Under 2 to show time, uh, declare. Uh, 247 for 4 3, Angel 2 3. Contact is off. Alright, there's a uh, Husky, go ahead and turn off. Copy that. Uh, I don't see it. That's yeah, fine. It's probably not at you. Just continuing west. Copy that. So remember, don't defend too much. We're not worried about the defensive. Just make sure you have enough fuel to continue. Okay. Copy yeah, that. I'm just staying in a mill power, bobbing and weaving. Sounds good. Two hooking. Right. I got nails 29 to the east. Angels 20. Not sure. I'm cold. Showtime, copy. Two got him locked up. Free to engage. Two, five, three long. And crank right and come right. Crank and right. Alright, one is hot. Copy that. Want me to come right behind you? Yeah, just I'm gonna set up a grinder so pass me and then just come up behind me. Uh, at a little bit of distance. Alright, two targets. Uh, did you get the leading or the trailing? Do you know? I believe it's leading. Copy. 
two hook him, that's... Okay, so if we get hit, is there a rally point that we go to? Negative, just continue. Okay, cut. Fox 3, 2, 2, 9, 3, 1, 14,000. The other one's cold behind him. Hey, Prim, that's, pro that's uh, probably them, but I'm in the line of fire right now, so don't shoot yet. I'll just need to get out of your line of fire. Hunter, your target is within cold track of west. Additional threat behind him, 8 miles. Fire 2, showtime, copy. Alright, that trailer is hot on you. Track east. Alright, one is cold visual. Copy that. I'm uh, still locked on, uh, foggy. Copy. Go and uh, turn turn cold. Turn two seven zero. Copy that. Go and cold. Locking off. Turn two to show time. Uh, declare two four three four four eight angel two two. Two four three forty eight twenty two thousand hostel F sixteen. Turn two to show time. Copy. Box three bolt targets two one one three five fifteen thousand. Defending missile and off. All right, bro. Got tally 23 miles out. Angels 20, speed 260, tracking north. I'd want to. Bulls uh, 21541, Angels 14. Okay. All right, you take him. Negative. Coming off right. Negative, negative. I am landing. Yeah, the guy at 14 is is uh, not a player. Okay, copy that. 102 to showtime. Uh, declare 230 for 47. Angels 20. 237. Correction. 230 47. 20,000. Hostile F16. Copy. Range 15 miles. Yeah, I got him. He's in a fireball. He's on, fi He's on fire. It's probably a bug. <laughs> You're defending. Yep. Fox three two two eight four four two. To his head. To his head. Yeah. That bug had me tripping. Yeah, one got hit too. Showtime, new picture. Picture single group, 23244, 20,000, track west. Caution. Caution. Copy that on all Okay, two, I got him at uh, Angels 27, flowing cold, tracking west. 241, 451. Two copies, I'm trail, my 10 miles. Hunter, showtime, single group maneuver. Track northeast. Hunter, to showtime, uh, copy that, tally. Uh, declare 242 for 49, Angel Sutu. 2449, single group, hostile, F16. Copy. Range 13 miles. Copy that. Box 3. Two three nine four four six cranking left. Your fox straight cranking right. God damn, they hit me quick. Yeah, one hit. Jesus Christ, barely getting a turn. Who's defensive? Yeah, that Marv is hella close. God damn it. Knock it off. Knock it off. Let's start heading home. Yeah, I just want to point out at what point uh, did each each uh player shoot you're cold there and came back hot 26 miles and I'm we're already shooting so 24 miles for me Rody shot at 27 29 so Rody shot at 29 miles 0.86 with a negligent uh or very small altitude advantage. Yeah, I just... I lofted it. Yep, lofted it. 29 miles. Um, yeah, we were lofting at our opt, our pi area. I'm pretty sure you were still getting your... your uh, 
dynamic launch zone corrected, and our stuff is already halfway there. Yep. And then we're cranking already, so it just it just increases distance or the uh, dynamic launch zone uh, parameters. Yeah, you launched one. I'm, I'm already cold at this point. There's already some coming at you. That's the mm -mm. how bad the uh, aim the uh, AA12s and PL12s are. The, the PL12s are better. Oh, you dodged that one. Nice. Oh, nice. I was about to say you just ran into it, but no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we just dodge it, no problem. Not even, not even going fast. <laughs> Point six two mock. I told Rody to, Rody to come back in. He foxes, twenty seven miles. With a uh, about ten thousand foot advantage, so that's a pretty big advantage for. Altitude wise. Boop. Boop. Sorry, bro. No problem. Yeah, look, look how long I waited to do anything. So you shot at 23 miles, uh, about 10,000 feet uh, above you. The first shot was the turn. I was yeah. hoping it would go pit bull and try to scare you off. I got a shot off, cranked it, and then I think this dies. This one uh, followed me a little bit more. Defeated that one, so that was good. So that's a, a barely defeat, so that's basically where, where Mar should be. Let's go back and see where that was. So Mar... At this altitude right here, I'm not going. I'm not going too fast. So I shot it 14 miles. So I'm going somewhat slow, and you're going uh, a little slow. But you do turn off instantaneously. So that helped you. You kind of cranked it a little bit, and then you defended, and you're able to get away from with those uh, serpentine maneuvers. Ooh, it's barely, but you did it. That was close. Nice job. I was trying to save fuel at the same time. Yeah, there was no reason to defend because you're. There's no reason to. But all the way down, I was like, I should be dead now. Yeah, I should be dead any any any, any moment now. now. But yeah, you saw the U. That's 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 all you see. It's nothing really else. Beep. Lofted missiles back and forth when I got hit. I got hit by that one. Oh, very nice. Nice. So this one, I was 0.96. Oh, oh this is the one that you, you, didn't, you didn't want me to gauge. Yeah, this is that one. I think you got both of us on this one. So you shot at 17 miles. I shot at 14 miles. Yeah, and you probably snipped it a little early, but it, I mean, it still hit me. But yeah, for the AA-12s, you gotta you can't support it as long as you would like, or else you're gonna get swacked. Yeah, that thing is just. He yeah, defeated that one. Nice. Uh, Prime, which AMRAMs um, in this theater uh, did you have? I had the AIM-120 Char AIM Charlie 7s. So the... Charlie 7, okay. Yeah, the, the newest, or the, more, the m most capable one. So they're even uh, worse to face than what we had in TVT. Yes. Yeah, they're even worse. If you get up, if you get up high, you could shoot these things off at 30 miles with a pretty good um, PK rate. Because because they they keep their speed longer. So when they go pit bull, even though they traveled 20 miles, they're still going Mach two and a half, three 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 Mach. I'm gonna when see this. Rodeo's going. Yeah. Uh, something happened with my 
with my blame of Jesus. And nothing hit me. Yeah. Did I over G it? I don't know. You can see that. Yeah, see 14 miles. And then this was like 2.43. Yeah, I think I was looking. Yeah, yeah. That's when I was in autopilot. I just let it hit me. I was like, God damn. Yeah, it peaked at almost 4 Mach. I was like, bloop. And yeah, and th that shot right there is waiting for me to get in decent range. Yeah, so it's like you're waiting, you're waiting. It's like, all right, where is it at? And then, and then you get hit. Like, yeah, oh. no chance. And then I just dodge it like nothing. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, even in the Su 30s where we have the speed and the altitude, like right here, if you if you look at your speed, you're doing 0.68 Mach. You got to be. Uh, in order to fire off these terrible missiles, you got to be supersonic, or maybe just underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, like, that's where the Su-30s uh, twin engines come in handy. You know, we can get up there at thirty, thirty-five thousand, just without even going to afterburner. We're just pushing it, and we're going right up to uh, to the fight at those speeds. That's the only way you get the missile to be competitive. Yep. And even then, like, we're still, you can see the difference. I, I should pull up an example, but it's like, you can see, like, the AMRAMs are right on our tails, and our missiles don't even come anywhere close. But it's still a draw, because everyone walks away without getting killed. Mm-hmm. Like jousting. It's just jousting back and forth. It's about when called knock it off yep so uh yeah as you could see the uh inferior missiles but they're still deadly but now that you are more familiar with them you kind of know what your adversaries are going to try to do especially to, to try to get fast um fast and high to make them more um competitive with the 120 absolutely when Craig gets back, um, maybe we could run another another type of thing. Except we could actually fly the Su thirties. Yeah, we, we did in one one of the past missions. It was me and old Craig. We did something. We did the same thing. We were at like Mach one point five, and it showed they're uh, competitive against the one twenty. Oh yeah, the, the Su thirty. Jesus, the speed that they have. I wanted to put up a. GIF image based on um, the weapon stuff that we were talking. I'll find it in a second. Remember, uh, we were talking about dodging, um, uh, dodging missiles and the 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 right uh, G's to pull and all of that. I actually, got lucky one time. There, I found it. I'll put it in the. Um, FWS. Okay. So this was, it was an AI chasing me down. And the only reason why I was able to turn in time was I heard the voice that said that the missile was inbound. Oh. Jeez. So that's, uh, that's an example where you don't think, you just do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, break. Meow. <clears throat> And you got a kill. Hmm. Yeah. 